Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with grilled salmon with warm bacon and corn relish. That's right, if you enjoy cold, artificially colored pickle relish on top of hot dogs made from recovered meat byproducts, you are really going to love this. And this was inspired by the fact we get so many requests for new and exciting ways to use salmon. And this very easy and summery relish is a great way to do it. And also, did I mention there'd be bacon? Oh yeah, so that's the first step. We're going to slice up some bacon. So I think I have like six strips there. We're going to cut it about a half inch thick. And we're going to throw that in a pan over medium heat. And we're going to cook that fairly crisp. But we're not going to just stand there and watch it cook. Although I have done that before when there's nothing good on TV. But in this case, we're going to use that time to prep our corn. All right, so don't forget about it. Keep an eye on the bacon. But while that's crisping up, let's go ahead and shave those corn kernels off our cobs. And we're going to do that by gripping our ear firmly in one hand and then holding a sharp knife at a 45 degree angle. And you're just going to basically shave those kernels into a bowl. All right, and don't worry about going down too far. We're going to scrape this in a second. And the key thing here to concentrate on is not how much corn you're shaving into the bowl. It's how much fingertips you're not shaving into the bowl. All right, so be very careful. And if that little bit of corn silk I missed is bothering you, don't worry. It actually sticks to the side of the bowl and you can pull it out. It's not a big deal. Don't be afraid of corn silk. And once you've shaved all those kernels off, turn the knife over, scrape the cob with the back of the knife, and you'll get the rest of the kernel and some beautiful, sweet corn juice, which some people call corn milk. You call what you want. You are the SpongeBob of your corn cob. All right, so once we've sliced and scraped two ears of corn into a bowl, we're going to go back and check our bacon, which hopefully is getting crisp by now. And please make sure your bacon gets nice and brown and crispy. You do not want it too fatty. No one's ever had a warm bacon and corn relish and said to themselves, this is good, but I wish it was flabbier. Okay, so make sure you cook the bacon thoroughly. So right there, mine's looking perfect. And at that point, we're going to dump in some sliced green onions and some diced sweet red bell pepper. And obviously, if you want to use a spicier pepper, feel free. That would be delicious. So we're going to saute the peppers and the onion for about two minutes. All right, we don't want it soft and mushy. We just want to take the raw edge off. At that point, you can go ahead and dump in your corn. And we're going to cook that for just like a minute. We don't really want to cook the corn. We just kind of want to warm it through. And it's funny when I buy corn for something like this because I do prefer the sweetness of the white corn, but the appearance of the yellow corn, which leads to an interesting philosophical argument. Should you always go for taste over appearance? I don't know. We might have to discuss that on the blog post. And at that point, we're going to finish this off with a little bit of seasoning. For me, that was a little salt, pepper, and cayenne. I also threw in another pinch of the green onion, a little bit of the greener parts from the top for appearance. And then last but not least, a little bit of olive oil and a little splash of rice vinegar, which is going to give it that kind of wet, sticky, relish texture I'm looking for. And at that point, you can turn off the heat, stir it around, give it a taste. Maybe you want a little more vinegar. Maybe you want a pinch of salt. Maybe you want a little more cayenne. But once you're happy with that, just keep it warm until your salmon is cooked. And yes, you can make that ahead of time and just warm it up when you're ready to serve. All right, so our bacon corn relish is done and it's on to the salmon. So I have two beautiful center cut boneless salmon filet. We're going to put a few drips of vegetable oil on there. Just spread it around with your finger or a brush. Then go ahead and season that generously with salt, pepper, and cayenne. And then I suggest you cook this on a hot charcoal fire for about five minutes aside until it's perfectly medium. And yes, I did the little half turns so I could get those cool grill marks. And then just one quick reminder, when you're grilling salmon after you flip it, in say two or three minutes, you'll see this crevice start to open up, this crack. And that is your window into the salmon sole. And by soul, I mean doneness. All right, that little crevasse will let you peek inside to see how your salmon's doing. And as you know, I like mine about medium. So at that point, by peeking in that crack and feeling it, I decided mine was perfect. So I pulled that one off. This piece was just a hair bigger, so I gave it an extra minute. You got to be prepared to do that kind of thing when you're cooking. And then we're going to head back inside for final assembly. And by the way, always check the fridge. I had two handfuls of leftover raw spinach from a salad. So I used that as a base, totally optional. But I figured, hey, spinach salads a lot of times get warm bacon dressing, so this might work. And then we're going to spoon over that hot, sweet, delicious, warm bacon and corn relish. Maybe finish it off with a little green onion. And that is done. And once you've relished your salmon, it's time to relish your salmon. I just think corn and bacon go so well with salmon. And you can see there why I was peeking inside my salmon. We got that perfect doneness. It flakes easily. Yet the flesh is just a touch translucent inside, just very moist, very succulent. And by the way, you guys got to stop making fun of how long it takes me to get the food on the fork. I'm usually using the wrong hand and trying to look in a viewfinder while I do it. So you'll have to take my word for it. In real life, I'm a fairly coordinated eater. 
I mean, I'm not saying I'm as graceful as those people on Downton Abbey, but I'm pretty good. But anyway, if you're looking for a very vibrant, summery preparation for some grilled salmon, I hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.